He got into the race late. He was on the wrong side of the gun issue for many <clears throat> liberal Democrats, and his personality falls along the low-key range. But Richard Cordray is one win away from returning the governor's office to the Democrats. Cordray cruised to victory. We thought Dennis Kucinich had a chance or a you know, at least a show, a chance to show. Instead, Cordray racked up nearly three times the votes, with Joe Schiavone and Bill O'Neill finishing far behind. Cordray promises to fight for ordinary Ohioans in the fall campaign. You send your tax dollars to Columbus, but they don't come back to strengthen our communities. Instead, they often go to the wealthiest Ohioans who need them the least. At the same time, our state legislature is fascinated with these narrow political fights and ideological squabbles that are strangely disconnected from the needs of most Ohioans. That needs to change, and it will. One thing that never changes, Laura Bischoff, is that Democrats have to work extra hard to turn out the vote. Can a rich Cordray excite the base enough to get out the vote in November 2018? You know, in listening to him over the last five months, um, you know, initially, like, his rollout speech was a little clumsy, but um, I think you've seen him evolve a little bit. Last on Tuesday, when he made his um, victory speech at the primary, I thought it was one of his stronger, more focused speeches. It only went on for, like, eight minutes or so. Um, I think that he needs to continue to hone his message and try to make sure that he's every day trying to speak to everyday Ohioans about regular issues that they care about. The turnout wasn't so hot on uh, uh, in the, for the primary, uh, Daryl Rowland, uh, among Democrats. It was, it, I guess, the point is, it was typical. Well, yeah. Overall, about one out of every five eligible registered voters turned out to vote, um, which is pretty pathetic because everyone had something to vote on on the con congressional redistricting issue, which which did end up passing among those who did vote. But still, 80 percent said, "Nah, not going to bother. Whatever those politicians want to do to me, I'll let them do it." So you can see I might have a point of view on that issue. Uh, but there are, right now, because of the 2016 primary, Trump versus Kasich, um, there are a lot more registered Republicans in the state mm -hmm. than Democrats. A uh, big question is what's going to happen this year? The first statewide election out of the box, Republicans did show up in greater numbers. So that says something. Now, it's not the same proportion as happened in 2016. So we'll see how this plays out on fall. But your, your question is very astute at the top of the ticket you know, can make or break it. We saw what happened four years ago with Ed Fitzgerald, you know, just basically took the whole ticket down with him. I haven't seen the Democrats this united or excited for a very long time. Cordray got 86 out of 88 counties. In 20 counties, he got more than 70 percent of the vote. Immediately, Joe Schiavone and Dennis Kucinich came out and said, I'm going to support the nominee. And the Democrats are tired of losing. We've been losing for a long time, and I think they see this ticket as a chance to finally win, and they see this social conservative bent coming out of Mike DeWine and this ECOT scandal as things that can really help propel them to victory when their team is going to focus on the economic issues. That's what voters want to hear about. I'm not super familiar with Betty Sutton uh, on the hostings. Uh, wh what does she bring to the, you know, the ticket? Uh, well, I think she's very popular in Northeast Ohio. And when she was in Congress, she did cash for clunkers, and she infused much-needed capital into the supply chain right when it was ready to collapse. And that's important. All the big automakers and auto parts makers in Ohio sell the same suppliers. And she has, she's the rare Democrat with important job creation credentials. She did the amendment to the ACA when she was in Congress that made the pre-existing condition ban take effect immediately. Obamacare is popular. It wasn't repealed and replaced. It was almost killed. So I think she has a good economic message, too. You know, it's interesting. The Democrats, um, like Sandy said, they're tired of losing, and they've been losing, they've been losing a lot. Um, the, the Republicans have <laughs> For good held, reason, right? <laughs> the Republicans have held the governor's office for 24 of the last 28 years. In yeah. a swing and, state. And not only that, but Sherrod Brown is the only Democrat to hold statewide elective office. They used to have, uh, there was 50% um, more, but then, you know, Bill O'Neill resigned, <laughs> so he could run for governor.